again and welcome to Manch Talk. I am Tammy Garthway. And I'm Carla Garrick. And Carla was in Miami for a few days. So I was. A little bit jealous. Um, I, uh, I didn't get much of a tan, but it was warm. Yeah. It was, you know, February and it, it's, it's like actually kind of cloudy yeah. and it's their winter it's hit or too, miss. Right? right? Right. We've gone to Florida in December, in January, in February. If I want to go for a, if I want to go and know I'm getting beach weather, I have to go, you have to go like late March at least. Yeah. I also, I went for a, a walk on the beach. I thought it was so interesting. I was so on part of Miami. So Miami beach. Yep. So like South, South beach, beach, I, I love South beach. Um, I think it was South Beach. I'm, I'm, was I'm it not very sure. retro looking? It wasn't the super art deco. Okay. I think it was farther down. Okay. Yep. Um, I'm trying to remember the hotel's yeah. name, but I don't. I know. Um, I had some really good noshes, you know, like just, I mean, I cook so much and I hardly ever eat out. So yeah. it's a real treat for me when I'm just like, oh, yes, yeah, all the shrimp, <laughs> all the ceviche, all of it. That was fantastic. Um, interesting topic you know things i have to think about yeah. and mull over but uh all in all you know who's going to complain well, about yeah. four days in, that's in right. miami that's right if you live in new hampshire in february um, so not sure was that over the weekend yeah I left on thursday got in thursday night came back midnight on sunday so so um, in and out as they say i feel like i want to like try to figure out before I go into any of the other things, because this one's like a standout. So I did, um, in case you missed it, um, Sebastian Sharonoff, the Ward 6 alderman, had re had resigned. resigned right? And there's yeah. going to be a special election on May 9th. And um, this lovely woman, Chrissy Cantor, who owns Chill okay. Spa, filed for office. Oh, cool. Um, to take Sebastian's spot yesterday. So um, I'm sure we'll have more on that. Maybe we can have her on one day or something. That so, would be kind of cool. So she's a Republican or... I kind of presume because so. It's nonpartisan. It's nonpartisan. I, I'll, I'm going to presume she's not a Democrat. Okay. And go with that. Um, so, anyways, we'll have more of that. Her name's Chrissy Cantor. She's obviously lives in Ward Six. She's well known because she owns Chill Spa. Um, Chill Spa already. Yeah. Like that's yeah. nine tenths. Well, I laugh. I was on their website one I'm day. Like, why looking, not? <laughs> and they'll they'll be like you know somebody who does facials and oh, did it say enchilinator? And chill like, and they all have this <laughs> and chill expert or chillotomy or something. I don't know. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Not, you know, some weird word that you're like, oh, that's funny. Um, so that's my that's my uplifting bit for this little 30 minute window. Um, another what? Aliens I aren't know. uplifting? I What's know. going on, folks? Oh if God. anyone knows, please do email us and let us know are we in the middle of a real alien invasion? Or are we in the middle of the start of the false flag alien invasion, well, which I predicted I in did, 2018? I did so see a meme. We'll see. And I was trying to. Re <laughs> I hate when you see a meme and you can't really remember it, and you're trying to tell somebody, and you're like, okay, it was funnier and when it was a meme. Right. But there was a it, at the top was Joe Biden in like a captain suit, and he's like, we've got the you know the files um and then we've got the balloon th situation and we've got this and we've got that release the alien story and there's some <laughs> then there's a, a woman in an office and she's like release the alien story and it is you you do have to really well you know like is this to distract us is the balloon thing to distract us from other things like you know blowing up the uh, Nord Stream pipeline and things like that so so for folks who aren't up <laughs> on the latest real news in America Seymour Hirsch yes. who is a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist who has a checkered and long and illustrious yeah. career he exposed the Miley yeah. massacres he exposed um uh, uh i think it was he involved with uh okay i'm gonna blank on the other yeah, ones okay. but there's a whole bunch of them and he basically wrote a substack last yeah. week that came out right around the time the balloon aliens, start showing up um taking the position that based on his sources and frankly based on what the government themselves said joe biden said we will not let lord yeah, uh, nordstrom North 2 go live yeah. uh newland who works for the department of uh some uh, homeland security i Maybe. think or something but anyway her last name is newland she was like oh nordstrom's not going to happen trust from england sent a text to Blinken in the U.S. right after Nordstrom blew, blew up, up, saying it's done. Seymour Hirsch, on top of that, has other sources. So basically, it looks 
like right. the U.S. government colluding with other Western countries, possibly Germany right. Right. and blew um, up Norway, the gas pipeline. blew up the gas pipeline. And um, then tried to say it was Putin, of course, because it's that's the thing. You just say it's Putin. Well, but right. what would Putin, why so, would Putin so, want to cut off the gas to his own country? But we'll cut, we'll not only cut oh, off from. gas, but ga cut off gas revenues, right? right? So, so part of this energy crisis we're seeing in Europe is because the yes. second pipeline got taken down. So heating is very, very hot. Yep. So this is going on. So, you know, partly it's like, mm, what can we distract the masses yeah. with? And then let's talk about Ohio oh, for a hot I, second. You know, so we were talking about Ohio before. We were listening to some stuff last night, too. And, um, and by the way, if America blew up that pipeline, that is categorically under international law, sabotage yeah. and an act of war this is not something like we should be glossing no. over or say this is funny well, or this is whatever Ohio, it is dangerous if we are starting to go down a path towards world war three um i don't think we should buy into it because i think that energy is really negative mm. you see people over twitter people who are younger and kind of going oh my god are we going to be yeah. in world war three yep. is nuclear war coming and i'm of the mindset at like this, this stage where i'm like no actually if i've learned one thing they're constantly just trying to scare yeah, so us right in ohio there was a train derailment of a of a very of a hazardous, hazardous toxic um polychlorine spill. Vinyl. Vinyl, yes. Which is what is used to make PVC. That's the letters P, V, polychlorine file. And um, it's very toxic. And so this train derailed. And I mean, if you see the pictures, there's like 20 cars on. And the, the, the from the stories, and who knows, right? The, there was gas leaking. So there so, was already so going to be something. So transported in a liquefied state. Yes. So it has to be very cool in order for it not to be very dangerous. Volum, right. So then the trains came somehow derailed. Yep. Um, and then because they were concerned that they couldn't keep it cold, I think was the story. Well, there was gas. There was gas. Yeah. Well, there was. Set it on fire. Well, there was. Uh, this is where Dan and I were talking. And I'm like, I don't know. Like, I don't know how to, what to do in that situation. Like, I'm not a, an expert in these types of gases. So I'm torn. I, half of me is like, well, that's freaking scary and weird. But then on the flip side, we don't know if not doing that was even equally scary. So, you know so I mean? this like, happened in East Palestine. Is that to th the town's name? It is. Something it's near Palestine yeah. in Ohio, close to the border with, with Pennsylvania. Yeah. Very odd things are going on, quite frankly, because first of all, they actually filmed a disaster movie two towns yes, over think... from where this happened. So there are literally on the interwebs, there are people who acted as extras in the disaster movie that had a plot line of trains yeah. derailing and then this huge so, environmental spill so happens. So it is, people there are concerned because they don't know, I mean, and it's a legitimate concern. Nobody really seems to be able to tell anybody what, well, the question is, gonna... where where's the mainstream media and why right, aren't it's, our it's rarely... government control freaks who that will, is... like, get billions of dollars that... to take care of this crap telling us what's going on? That is the on. one thing that we were watching. It was on t Tucker did talk about it last night, so that was, like, the first time I've heard it. Um, but I don't, like... I... I honestly don't claim to know whether leaving it would have been better or blowing it up was better because, you know, it is well, a volatile substance, but it just seems odd that there's... This so, so the problem is actually the chlorine um, combines, when you, when you set it on yeah. fire, it, it combines with water droplets. So basically what they've done by immediately burning it as opposed to maybe i don't know taking five minutes or ten minutes with some experts and being like what can we do maybe there well, were other that's options what they did. um they've basically combined they've created acid rain mm. and this is not an insignificant issue and the reason that there is something that ties all of this together if you're watching government news which is propaganda at this stage mm. so people in countries like russia or Cuba or Venezuela or anywhere where there's authoritarians, the people know they shouldn't believe anything they read in Pravda right. or, you know. Right. They just go, they just so, ignore So it. people understand, hey, our government lies to us. Yep. The truth lies somewhere else. Americans are still apparently figuring this part yes. out. But, um, but 
we know they like to report a lot on environmental stuff. Mm -hmm. The real tell on both these stories, Nordstrom being blown up, the largest methane gas leak in the history of the world, strangely not reported on. Yeah, I know. At all. Yep. So that is a tell that someone is lying to you and that yeah. Seymour Hersh's reporting it's is probably, probably accurate. The same thing in Ohio. Yep. This massive, massive thing that happened that you are not seeing on the mainstream nope. news. So then I heard there were four other train derailments oh, there are yesterday. So here's the so thing. Th I, I've been saying this for probably 15 years. While I do want to take a train ride through the Rockies because it's supposed to be beautiful, I don't know if you could pay me to get on a train because there are that many trail derailments all the time. So that was all the time. Shame on you know we. It, it's like the worst mode of transportation. Like I had a friend who they used to take a train down. He did. He wouldn't fly. So they would take a train to say like Miami and get on a cruise. I mean, what's the chance that you know somebody that? was on a train that hit a human being and killed you know, like you're like oh my god and they that said yeah that is also an interestingly preferred choice of suicide for uh, yeah people. it's just I, train, I don't get it but. our train system and i mean this is obviously a cargo train and not a person but it's the same mostly the same rail systems it's like i don't know i find that there's way more troubles with train than people realize so can i just for the folks back home who only watch us for carlos crazy conspiracy theories which i might actually just make a little short youtube thing once a week um here's what i find interesting i watched a fascinating documentary that I don't think got the uh, attention it deserved. And uh, there are two. The one has to do with the Stuxnet virus, okay. which was a virus developed by the US DOD, so the uh, American Army military, that they unleashed on the Iraq nuclear programs. Okay. And basically what it was, was it was a computer virus that went into the chips that they used on their centrifuges that are supposed to make them spin a certain way. And if you make them spin crazy, you break the, the nuclear energy and you break their nuclear program. So in 2016, hmm. I believe, that happened. That was technically from an international law. If you still, you know, mm. want to follow the rule of law, that was probably an act of war. Since then, there have been all these cyber warfares that have been taking place that no one calls what they should call it. There was a second documentary that sort of touched on the Stuxnet stuff, but then talks about all these other things that are happening that uh, international players are doing in different jurisdictions, including in the US. Here's my theory. Last year sometime, a transformer at the Hoover Dam mm. blew up. Yep. It was in the news for less than a day. So part of my, the way I analyze news is I'm like, when they make a big deal out of something, you can't, it's the only thing you can hear, COVID, 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 yep. COVID. That's sus, right? When we're, stuff happens and you never hear about it again that's sus too so those transformer and and it the, literally the news just said oh there was a transformer that blew up and i was like hmm there was a transformer that blew up at the hoover dam i wonder what would happen if a hundred transformers or how many transformers there possibly are in the Hoover Dam, all blew up at mm. the same time. Question: Would that blow out a the, the entire dam wall, thereby flooding everything yeah. downstream from the Hoover Dam? That would probably be very, very damaging mm. and dangerous. It would be right. So, I'm wondering between these weird balloons that are flying everywhere that no one can really tell us what they're doing, right? right. So some people are saying they're Chinese balloons and they're just um, weather balloons. I read a really interesting thing this morning that said, I haven't verified this beyond you know wh yeah. whatever it was, but it, 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 it was people who are in the military or uh, retired military and they said the, 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 the surveillance was to f catch things that move fast. And uh, so things like missiles, uh, incoming planes, yeah. MiGs, that kind of stuff. For some reason, and I, I, this was not in it, I'm just speculating. 
after 9-11 would be my guess, they, they moved from watching fast and slow things to only watching fast things. Someone probably forgot because that's how the government is and they kind of never, based on this guy's substack, he was like, they kind of never switched on the find the slow stuff. Right. So his position was sort of like, oh, suddenly we're finding all this slow, slow stuff. stuff. It's been there for right, a while, right. but um, now we're just noticing it again because they're actually tracking for that. That's possible. Yep. Could be. But I'm wondering if the surveillance things and um, some kind of cyber warfare that has to do with transformers, um, uh, chips, basically, mm. right? So part of the, the narrative we're hearing a lot of is America needs to bring its chip manufacturing yes, home. definitely. Um, you know, and, and we should be manufacturing more yeah, things here. It would here. seem I like we could be would, able to do that. <laughs> um, it's like prescription drugs. I'm like, yeah, I don't really know. Do we manufacture prescription drugs here? Because if not, why? It's just a machine. Well, I mean, part of it is, you know, if we look economically, is because as the regulatory bodies in America mm. became too large, yep. it became too expensive to manufacture things here if you're looking globally yeah, at a I competitive know. market, right? So, um, you know, if you're going to make it here and it costs a dollar and you can make it in China for three yeah, cents know, and it costs you 40 cents to ship it here, none of that's good for the environment, by the way, or for people or for workers or any of that, right? Yeah. But that was the reasoning. So I think maybe we're resetting the world a little and maybe that's not, not resetting in the WEF no. version, but, you know, rebalancing. Could be. Um, Could but be. I think we're also going to have w aliens. I mean, this timeline is pretty great. We got aliens. We got the AI has been unleashed. Apparently, like reality is becoming movie plots or movie uh, plots AI, are becoming reality. AI, AI um, Jordan Peterson's daughter tried to have the, um, Albert, a, the chat. G chat, um, G B T, uh, whatever. I mean, you know what I mean. Chat G P T. Right. I'm yes. like, there's a G in there somewhere. <laughs> um, write a p paragraph about her father, Jordan Peterson, and it wrote back that he's not allowed to write about Jordan so, Peterson. So that was interesting. So there is that, but the, so now someone actually wrote a another AI algo called Dan, and Dan, Dan. <laughs> is the un PC algorithm so everything that is now being censored on the original g uh chat gpt chat gpt <laughs> uh you can now go ask dan and dan will um, do it the ai there you go dan did you know you that rhyming is that uh, what you do in your second job trump and all <laughs> um i do want to talk about a couple things before we run out of time um i did notice in uh, manchester ink link um reported on it slightly um in the old baked location is a new place going in called bond b-o-n-d and it says bond brewing and barbecue so we'll see um I'm i do a fan of barbecue so um, i'm down uh, i saw a report there was a whole mound of homeless stuff and people under the granite street bridge near the foundry that the city was cleaning oh. out some of the excess and i was like you know that, that we we've got to do something because there's now that, rat infestations. Well, did you hear I, this on the? Over I here? did, and I'm torn about that because I, part of that's the landlord's problem, and problem is the tenant's problem. And there's, apparently, there have been rats for a long time, but now it's just worse. But um, I felt bad for the foundry. <laughs> or we might just have a plague. No, no, about because the aliens. it's only in this one <laughs> block area that they seem to be having a problem. Um, but you know the, the foundry restaurants right there, and they have this big patio. And who's gonna you know when it, the warm weather comes along, who's gonna go sit on a patio where you're looking out? Honestly, and seeing... that's why we stopped going no. there for so, that exact reason. There were a couple incidents. There was a stabbing outside of the 603 Grill and Chill, or whatever the heck the name of that is, <laughs> used to be uh, the Black Brimmer. Um, the whole block was taped out because they had uh, the hazmat people come in to clean up the blood. And I don't I don't think I've read that the person died, but they had an arrest warrant out there for this guy who knows if they catch him because we never see the follow-up um then yesterday there was gunfire uh west and granite and there was a be on the lookout for either a silver or gold mercedes with maybe florida plates and then that so that's like at 4 30 in the afternoon and about like just before eight there was another shooting reported behind like snoo the uh, snoo arena on pine street mm. and um people were talking it was in a conversation over the stabbing and that that this is why they don't go 
they don't come to Manchester anymore. Because I mean, that's why you bring a gun I mean, to a knife fight. <laughs> well, you know, granted, most of the, like the the shooting over near the go and the stabbing, these all started from incidents inside of. Bar. Alcohol. <laughs> you know, we drank. <laughs> that al- I, I, is the culprit. Yeah, but I drank alcohol when I was thirty years old out in bars, and nobody was shooting and stabbing. Yes, like, they it, were. Mm, I don't think so. Um, but the the problem is, is that people don't want to come downtown because between the homeless people and the crime uptick, and uh, Keith Murphy even chimed in and he goes, "Look, you know, this is the reality for us business owners. The places that are having fights and their people are getting stabbed outside and all that stuff hurt businesses, you know, four, six, eight blocks away. I mean, who's going to go to Exo on Elm Street or you know the um, I can't think of the name of the Italian place. I love it, um, Pagola. Uh, uh, or and I Keith, think they aren't they closing or closed? Oh, as well? no, who I knows, think, right? Maybe. And then Keith was saying, you know, he goes restaurants run on like an eight percent margin, so like all these things." impact them d- significantly and just in the past month his he's had two break-ins at his restaurant and like it just seems like it's getting worse and worse and worse and worse um and before i run out of time i do want to stop so that was what's going on in the the news part and we never hear follow-up did they catch the guy that they had the picture of that they wanted to arrest but on my way here i pull over on um a corner and i won't say where because i don't want to embarrass anybody and there's a man standing there and he's holding the sign saying he's homeless and whatever and I usually stop a little bit back because I don't need to engage. And then I thought, you know what? So I pulled up and I unrolled it and I said, can I ask you a couple questions? And he said, sure. And he was like older. Well, I can't even tell gauge age. He could have been in 40 for all I know. He didn't seem to have very many teeth. Um, he was worn, you know, he's, but he wasn't, um, didn't look wasted or anything. And I asked him, I said, so do you stay in the shelter? Like, where do you sleep at night? And he said he stays in the shelter and he stays in the fit shelter. And I said, okay. And I said, so what do you think about that? And he goes, it's an awful place. And I said, oh, that's unfortunate. And I go, so what one thing could somebody do to change your circumstance so that you're not standing here on the, you know, and he, he thought and he thought and he thought and he goes, well, bed bugs. And I was like, no, no, not something we can change in the shelter. What could somebody do for you to change it so that you're, and he went on to tell me that he just doesn't fit in. He said, when I go to the shelter, I'm always an outsider. He goes, I'm never part of the inside. He goes, so I stay away from people and I come here and I stand here because I'm away from people. He goes, look, I'm from Mount Washington Valley area. He goes, it doesn't matter where I go. I never fit in. He goes, whether it's here or Florida or whatever. So my takeaway, one, I kind of felt a little guilty that I drove away after talking to this man. I asked him if he does drugs and he said no. And he said he doesn't drink anymore, but he still smokes cigarettes and he really can't afford it because they're expensive. Um, and he said, and he smokes a lot of them. Mm. And my takeaway was one, I kind of feel bad and want to go back and bring him like a Subway sandwich or something or a hot bowl of soup. I don't know. Um, cause I kind of trusted that he wasn't, you know, using drugs. He didn't have that appearance. Um, but I also took away that I don't know if you can change his circumstance. I, I felt I, I, I did feel bad for him, but he himself was saying it didn't matter where he went. And he mentioned Florida. So you have the capability to get to Florida and back at some point in your life. And you were living the same way in all these places. And I don't even, I don't know if that, if that falls into a mental health slice in some ways it does, or is that just a lack of, um, lack of any support from years ago to get him, you know, we raise, you raise your children to take care of themselves and whatnot. And if nobody does, how do you fit? Yeah, I mean, you hear things from people that you're like, do you really not but, know but that? But I think it's also telling and sort of um, underwrites what we've talked about on the show is there's there's only so much help you can give in the abstract. Hmm. Let's fix the homeless right. problem. But at some stage, you actually have to go, there's a dude standing on the yeah. street corner. What's and this? that dude is like, I don't fit in anywhere and his request is can we fix the bed bugs right Right? so that at least if he sleeps someplace he's not i mean that's so so the thing is just at some stage people have to accept that there is a part of this problem that society 
can't fix mm. because there is society and there is not the abstract homeless there are individual problem. People. There are individual people over here. Homeless guy on this street corner, homeless person on this street corner, homeless hooker over here. Yep. And they're all different and they all have a story. And, you know, well, and, and at some stage, what? they also have to take self-ownership. Well, when we left the show um, last week, I drove down, I guess that's Pine Street. I don't know, whatever that's going down street is. And I literally went around the block because I was like, what the hell was that? There was a man standing on the sidewalk and this guy did look like he was on drugs. And he had no shirt on. Because I was, I'm noticing you see people walking down the street with just blankets wrapped around them. That's not normal. That's not, that's just not normal. Like walking down Elm Street and there yeah. comes a man in a blanket. So he had this blanket with a hole in it and he had it on his head and he had no <laughs> shirt and he had no shoes on. And I was like, what the heck is happening right there on the sidewalk? And I went around the block, and by the time I had come back around, he had a shirt on and stuff. So I was like, oh, he was literally changing his clothes on oh. the sidewalk. Mm. And I just was like, okay. Yeah, okay, that's a bit much. I don't know if I can deal with that either. Um, so a uh, uh, couple things. One, I drive by the bus station. I don't think they we're using the bus station, which is city-owned for the homeless, which they said they were going to do. The uh, the cash and center, to the best of my knowledge, is no longer being used, which when I tell people that, they were kind of surprised because I thought the problem was is we needed all these spaces in order mm. to accommodate all these people. And then they opened the shelter on Beach Street and now they don't need cash and center. And I was good. like, which is good, but that means you only needed to provide for 40 people. Then stop. Well, but so uh, so some of this urgency actually does create data that are then interesting points that we can look at, right? So so through this Arctic blast crisis, yes. we've ascertained, oh, we're being told there are 130 that are unbedded, right. but it seems based on opening up the shelters, shelters it's that it's like more 45th, like 40. Right. Uh, were there still people in the woods? I did not personally on any of the trails that I walk where they're probably at any given time yep. 10 that I know of. Yep. Uh, everyone seems gone. Yeah, there are a lot of abandoned gross we camps did, um, around. Bittersweet gapping in uh, Piscataqua River Park on Saturday morning and we didn't see any homeless. Yeah. Um, or, there, there are a few uh, um, actual camps still yeah. out there, so maybe we hmm. can coordinate with the, the city or something. I know that the MPD just got... A lot of Zushi nice ATVs, and I'm like, why can't they roll out there and do some of that pickup uh, while they're out monitoring well, the it's trails just, for us? I, I, go, I always go back to the same thing. As you know, when I went to an event that Victoria had where she had a bunch of people come in and talk about the homeless situation and what to do, and you know, who can help and what's working and what's not working, and um. My uh, my big thing is, as a taxpayer, I would like to know exactly what we're spending the money on. We talk about this a lot of times because a lot of money gets spent and a lot of it gets spent in these urgent emergency situations that aren't actual emergencies. They're things that we didn't, we kicked the can down the road and ignored. And the reality is, I mean, besides we're focusing on this aspect of the homeless and the crime, meanwhile, Nobody seems to know how to drive anymore because every day there's like some major accident on some random street in Manchester where somebody's flipped their car over. I think that and those could be strokes and heart attacks. It could be. It's just like where so it, it really, it, like you get in your car and you're like, somebody could come, just come flying into me. Life is dangerous, folks. Way more dangerous than it uh, needs to but be. But it's also very, very, very awesome and uh, it can be fantastic. And it's going to be warm and, and um, this afternoon going up to Pat's Peak with Dan and I am not oh, skiing. Fun. I will have lunch and a cocktail and he can ski till he's oh, tired. Fun. And um yeah. So they must have snow up there then. They make snow. Okay. So anyways. Well enjoy your skiing and everyone back home. Um, enjoy your week. And we'll Don't let it be bleak. <laughs> there you go. And we'll be back next week and we're creeping into March. So, you know, bye bye February soon. Okay. <laughs> bye guys. Bye.